tested. Launched in late February, the Motorola Zoom is the first serious competitor to Apple's iPad. Running Google's tablet-optimized Android 3.0 Honeycomb and powered by a dual-core Tegra 2 processor from NVIDIA, the Zoom looked to be the first iPad killer that Android fans have been waiting for. But after using the Zoom as my primary tablet for a month, my impressions of the device are still mixed. Google and Motorola have paid attention to the right details in both the software and hardware to make the Zoom a capable and adequate alternative to the original iPad. But performance hiccups and an incomplete feature set means the Zoom falls short of the bar set by Apple. Let's start with the physical build of the tablet, one of the most important factors of the device you're expected to hold for long periods of time. Motorola has designed the Zoom to be primarily held in one position. The location of its power button and volume buttons, as well as the way its back is curved, makes it most comfortable to be used in the landscape position. And for getting around the main user interface, landscape works well and makes sense. The downside is that using the zoom in portrait mode feels awkward, especially since the aspect ratio of its 10.1 inch screen is 16 to 10 as opposed to 4 to 3. Since I prefer to browse websites in the portrait position, I found the zoom's physical design unwieldy. While the zoom has less bezel around the screen than the iPad, there's actually still enough space to hold it without your thumbs obstructing the screen. At its thickest point, the zoom is also half an inch thick, and with its weight of a pound and a half, it's not really a device you can use comfortably with one hand for an extended period of time. Despite Motorola's unsatisfactory physical design decisions with the Zoom, the software experience fares much better. Android Honeycomb 3.0 is a vast improvement over 2.2 Froyo, which is what tablet makers had previously used for Android tablets, such as the Samsung Galaxy Tab. And even though the OS is clearly Android, with familiar home screens and an application launcher, it's clear that the designers of Google have paid a lot of attention to optimizing and polishing the experience for the larger tablet screen. The Zoom doesn't have any hardware buttons other than its volume and power switches. Honeycomb has put the home, back, and option buttons on the bottom left of the screen, which you can hit at any time while in any app. While I really dig the use of virtual buttons as opposed to physical buttons on the bezel that you can accidentally hit, I miss having haptic feedback. The addition of a quick switch menu button to access recently opened apps is nice, but it's not true multitasking. The new notification area, however, is extremely convenient, with one-touch access to Wi-Fi, brightness, orientation lock, and other settings. It's one of those no-brainer features that iOS still hasn't adopted yet, but is designed very well in Honeycomb. The home screen is also modified from previous Android versions to accommodate the 1280 by 800 pixel screen. With more screen real estate than a phone, there's more room for application shortcuts and widgets, and Honeycomb makes it easy to add and arrange both on its five screens. But while it's easy to arrange a bunch of widgets on one screen for quick access to mail or appointments, these widgets are fixed in size, which makes them less useful than I'd like. One other thing that bugged me is the placement of shortcuts on all four corners of the home screen, which aren't easy to tap when gripping the tablet with both hands. I'm still pleased with the design of the home screen. The swiping animation is smooth and the pseudo 3D design is distinct and feels modern, though whether you like it is a personal preference. Then there's the web browser, arguably the most important application in a modern mobile device. Honeycomb's browser is much improved over earlier attempts, with useful features like real tab browsing and an ability to sync your bookmarks with Chrome. The Honeycomb browser feels more like a desktop browser than a mobile one, and is smartly designed with little details, like a disappearing navigation bar when you scroll down a web page. I found myself browsing on the web on the Zoom more like I surf on a desktop or a laptop than on a phone. There wasn't that constant nagging feeling in the back of my head about the limitations of mobile browsing, as I often feel when using the iPhone and even the iPad. Unfortunately, some websites still see the Zoom as an Android phone and will redirect to the mobile site instead of the full site. You'll have to use a third-party browser for proper spoofing. The recently released Android Flash 10.2 download also works as advertised, though high-def video still stutters and Flash ads are annoying. Performance-wise, Zoom's browser weighted higher than the original iPad and tied the iPad 2 in the SunSpider benchmark, but page scrolling and pinch zooming still doesn't feel as smooth as the original iPad. Overall, Honeycomb hits most of the notes I'd expect from a tablet OS, but it's the little details that bug me after several weeks of day-to-day -day use. The camera app has a bevy of photo and video options, but lacks tap to focus. The Gmail app is one of the most functional email clients I've tested on a mobile device, and it's still missing a unified inbox. And while the bundled music app is a joy to use compared to previous Android players, 
I'm so flummoxed as to why video playback is so confined to the basic gallery app. Android as a tablet OS can use some improvement, and the fact that there are only a few dozen tablet optimized apps in the Android market shows the platform still lacks maturity. Some essential apps are present, including ebook readers and movie listing apps, but high profile emissions like Pandora and Twitter are more notable. Yes, you can run apps designed for Android phones on the Zoom, but the experience is hit or miss. The Zoom does have some additional features that distinguish it from the iPad. Its 5 megapixel rear camera takes decent photos that are markedly better than the iPad 2, but low light performance can't match the high bar set by the iPhone 4. The 2 megapixel front camera also trumps the iPad 2, but I never used it for anything more strenuous than video calling. HDMI for screen mirroring and a micro USB port for file transfers are also welcome features you won't find on the iPad, but I don't like that the Zoom requires a proprietary Motorola charger to top off the battery. It just won't charge off USB. The Zoom has two features that won't be activated until later, the micro SD slot and 4G LTE capability. The former will be unlocked with a software update, and the latter will only work if you send the Zoom in for Motorola to enable. The latent 4G functionality is part of why the Zoom costs a wallet-breaking $800, but a Wi-Fi version is available for $600. With 32GB of internal storage, that's a comparable price to the 32GB iPad. It's unfortunate, though, that there is no cheaper 16GB model. The Zoom also can't match the iPad when it comes to battery life. In my tests, I squeezed 8.5 hours of battery life out of the Zoom with a mix of offline video playback and Wi-Fi connected web browsing. That's a respectable showing, but standby time was a different story. Even with notifications turned off, I couldn't get the Zoom to last a weekend of idling without having to charge it. As the first Honeycomb tablet, the Zoom shows more than just promise for the platform. It's extremely capable and surpasses the market dominating iPad in some ways. But in my month of using it instead of the iPad, I couldn't shake that feeling of wishing for more from this device. I wish the Zoom was lighter, and I wish it was easier to hold. I wish web browsing was smoother, and I so badly wish for more tablet-friendly apps to show up in the market. A tablet this expensive shouldn't leave me wishing for so much more. And that's why, unless you absolutely need an Android tablet today, Android fans should wait until more Honeycomb tablets are released before considering the Zoom. There are models coming from LG and Samsung later this year. Google is finally getting things right with tablets, but the most polished tablet experience today still lies with iOS and the iPad. I'm Norm from Tested. See you guys next time.